how to crossfade tracks in Logic Pro X. I'm Charles Klein. I'm a singer songwriter and producer. And if you're an indie musician, you're producing music, you're creating music, you're a singer songwriter, and you want to know how to market your music, how to get better at producing music and writing songs, then this channel is definitely for you. In this video specifically, we're gonna look at how to crossfade tracks in Logic Pro X. So we have a production, we have audio files, we need to get them together, we need to crossfade them. Okay, let's jump into Logic now and do this. There are a few different ways we can crossfade tracks, and I'm gonna go through all of these different ways right now. Um, keep in mind, you can only crossfade audio tracks. You cannot crossfade MIDI tracks. So just kind of at the tail end of this video, I'll show you some ways on how we can crossfade MIDI tracks with, with some a bit of a hack. I'm gonna focus on a bit of an, a vocal track here at the bottom, this vocal track, and we're gonna just look at this track and apply crossfades on, on the ends, and we're gonna chop it up and apply crossfades in the middle, and we'll, we'll talk how the heck do you do this. In general, to apply fades, we can do it in the region editor, and we can also do it by using our toolbar. So we have a region editor in the top left, where you can see we have fade in and fade out. And then we have these toolbars here. So we have a left click tool, a command click tool, and then a right click tool. So I have my fader tool on the command tool, which means when I ever, whenever I hold command on my keyboard, I'm gonna get this fader button. And that means I can just go zoom into the end of this track, press command to get the fader up, and then click in and like do this little kind of square and now I've applied a fade. If I click and do like a big square, it's gonna apply a massive fade. If I click again, and I can now edit this fade, edit the shape of the fade, edit the slope of the fade, all by holding command and just moving my mouse. So that's one way to apply a fade. Now keep in mind, this also isn't a crossfade, right? I thought this video was about crossfades. Cool, yes, you're right, it is about crossfades, but it's the same thing. We would apply it in the same way with using the tool like this. I'm just gonna get rid of this fade by just kind of clicking it and dragging it all the way to the right. The same thing, we can click on the region and go to fade out here, and then we can click in and write a number, or we can actually just click and drag up, and now I'm creating this fade slowly. So like a, two, a four fade, you can barely even see it here. I'll have to zoom it in so you can really see it. You can kind of see it's created that fade. If I can continue to go up, it's gonna just cr create more of that fade for me. And so I can also do fade in, and you'll see if I go to the other end, it would have created a fade in for me on the other end of the track here. Wherever the track is, here. Cool. So now we have a fade in on this track. Now we can apply a cross fade together with both of these tracks. So the easiest way and how I do it, I'm just gonna get rid of this one, is using the tool editor. Oh, and I actually just did that by accident because I was holding command. So because I'm holding command and I have the command tool, again, same thing, command, create the square, and then there's your crossfade. Notice where you are zoomed in so you can apply the most appropriate fade. Like you don't wanna apply a fade that's like this big, right? Cause that's obnoxious and way too big. You're cutting off these signals. So apply the fade as small as possible that won't hurt the quality of the recording. So there's no huge audio signals here, so it doesn't really matter, but sometimes you might have a transient that you need to crossfade. So you need to get to a point where it's like in between both tracks. There's a breath there, we're just fading it right before that breath. So let's just remove this fade. I'm just gonna go to this region, type in zero. I'm just gonna go to this region, type in zero. Now that fade is gone. So another way to do that, and sometimes it can be quicker depending on what your workflow and how you, what your workflow is really. If this track does have some space where we can drag it, then we can create the cross fade by just dragging it over and it creates that fade for us. And so I'm gonna command Z that. How that happens is up at this top right here, we have drag. So we can put different things that we want to do whenever we drag a track. So I usually have it on default crossfade when I drag tracks because I do this sometimes. If you want other things like you can shuffle the tracks or overlap or no overlap, you can do these things whenever you drag a track. I can also be dragging this one right, just going over, clicking, and now we have a crossfade between each track. If I also think that's too big, I just kind of zoom in go maybe over a little bit and just drag it a bit. Let's look at a crossfade now, um, if we actually wanna crossfade audio together, where we might get into a sticky circumstance where we wanna crossfade two tracks that 
um, are really, really close together. So the best way to do this is to do it in the editor. So double click on the track and then you can have a much better view of the signal, right? And you can even bump this up more by clicking this and like you can really see the transient. So get like a good idea of where the, where the audio signal is. And okay, let's say we want to just take out this little transient here, right? So this would be something we'd want to zoom in on where we know we're going to cut the audio at an appropriate place. So we can cut it like here and then in here. So I have the marquee, I'm gonna get the marquee tool. Then I'm gonna click and just drag up right between this wave here. So I'm gonna click that and then delete. And now that signal is gone. So I can zoom out, you can see it's gone. So what I can do now is just click here and drag this over. And because I'm in drag mode still, I can just drag it over a little bit and it has created that fade. So I can also just go in and edit this fade a little bit by just zooming in. Now I can really see where the fade is happening. And so we can zoom in, we can bump up the signal even more. Okay, now we can really see things. So we can see that it might be better to actually have the fade like right around. Maybe if I drag this here and then just drag this a bit more over. We want these signals to be kind of lined up nicely. So here would be probably the best because you can see like if I zoom in, you can see this is the actual audio signal that we're really zoomed in. It's kind of going up and down, up and down, up and down. And we want to find the place to apply that crossfade where we won't have any pops and pops are created when there's like no real nice fade in to um, a, 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 a sig signal. So I'm going to just now change this to my fade tool so I can di press command and I can edit this a bit more now. I can just kind of drag this in a bit. If you're realizing like why sometimes you can't apply the crossfade because I'm zoomed into the max here. So I'll, like you can see zoom out and there you can see the fade. So that's how I would apply a fades on sticky situations like that. Make sure you're using the editor, editor tool, zooming in and really looking at the wave file. So if you are using Logic's built-in comp takes folder, so you're doing a vocal comp. Keep in mind as well, I did, I can show you over here, we have a comp that I did using like the Logic built-in comp. So basically these are all different takes of vocals down here, take one, take two, take three. This is going to automatically apply a crossfade for you. So if I'm like, I want this part of take one, then this part of take two, and then just this part of take three, this line here, like these lines up here, those are gonna be automatically cross faded for you when we merge the track. So if I go up here, flatten and merge this track, then those are gonna be automatically applied. That's how you can cross fade audio tracks, fading in, fading out, and cross fading tracks together. Now, let's say you have a MIDI track, how do you cross fade MIDI tracks? You just can't cross fade MIDI tracks because you can only cross fade audio signals. Now, there are some workarounds. You can do one of two things. You can either bounce the track to an audio track. So let's just look at some MIDI files here. We have this piano file. And let's say we have these two regions that we want to cross fade. So one way to be would be to bounce these and as audio signals and then cross fade those together. Another way we could do is actually double, uh, sorry, duplicate this track, bring one region down and then automate the volume. So I'm pressing A and opening up an automation. And then I'm just going to like do two dots here, do like a volume fade down and then I'll go into this track and do a volume fade up. And so if I'm zooming in, you can kind of see this is like a hacky way to do a crossfade with MIDI tracks. The other way would be just command, so let me command Z this a bit, would be to bounce this. So I could just go here and then do control B and it will bounce this piano file as an audio signal. So now we have this fresh audio track and I'll just bounce this as well. Keep in mind like, I would never do this in this situation, but this is good just to give you an example of how to do this because you don't need to fade these pianos in. But 
you might find yourself in a situation where you need this to happen. So I have drag on again, crossfade. I can just go up here and drag this track in. Now it's applied a massive crossfade because this region is quite large. So I need to go over here, drag that in, and apply the crossfade at the right point. Probably like right here, because you don't want to kill that transient, right? If I dragged it over top here, it would just cut that real first part of the piano where we really want. Consider subscribing to this channel if you're making music, producing music, you're an indie musician or songwriter and you're trying to get your music out there in the, in the, in the world because we also talk about how to market our music as well and the different things I'm doing to get streams on my music and new followers to my music. So please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.